Okay, Itchy. Go get the scratch. Yeah, okay, Willie. Hey, wait a minute. How am I supposed to rob a bank? I don't even have a, a gun, Willie. Huh, Willie? Huh? Can't you read? This is the friendly savings and loan. You don't need a gun. Go on. Okay, okay. How you doing, Toots? Hi, how can I help you this morning? Read that. Uh, I don't even understand the handwriting. It's... Give me that. Please give me all your money. Oh, yes, please give me all your money. Oh, I thought it said, please give me all your honey. <laughs> money I have, but honey, you'll have to squeeze a bee. I suppose you want in a brown paper bag? Yeah, that was the plate. Okay, here you go. Thank you for banking at Friendly's, and have a nice day. Huh? Aren't you going to count your money? Uh, no, no, that's okay. I'll let my friend do it. Uh, she's better with the numbers, and, uh, thanks. What were you doing over there? Yeah, the Friendly teller wanted me to count the story me. Ah, oh, that ain't a bad idea. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Let's see now, that's uh, five $10,000 bills, two $1,000 bills, six $100 bills, and uh, two tens. <laughs> Let's see, that's uh, 50,000 plus 2,000, that's 52,610 plus 10 is 20, that equals $52,620. Oh, all right, now come on, come on, let's divide it up, let's divide okay, it up. Okay, let's... Uh, one ten thousand dollar bill for me, one ten thousand dollar bill for you, and remember the three guys in the car, Louie, one for Lefty, one for Lizard. <laughs> They're waiting outside in the getaway car. Yeah. Now for the thousand dollar bill. Yeah, see there's uh, one one thousand dollar bill for me, one one thousand dollar bill for you. Uh-oh, we can't have this. What's the matter? What's the matter, Willie? What's the matter? What's hey, the matter? Hey, we got no $1,000 bills for Louie, Lefty, and Lizard. Eh, uh, them's the break. Hey, we gotta be fair. You gotta take back these two $1,000 bills and get change. And stop itching, itchy. You're making me nervous. All right, Willie, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Hi, hope everything was satisfactory. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just need change for these two $1,000 bills here. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I don't have any more money. You took it all, remember? But if you see the lovely young teller right next to me, right at the next window, I'm sure she'll be able to help you. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah. Hello. Say. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Oh, God, everybody says that. I just have that kind of face. Yeah. Well, listen, I got these uh, two $1,000 bills here, and I was wondering if it wouldn't be too much trouble for you to change them. Well, I would really like to, but with a bill this denomination, you would have to get it approved by the vice president. It's Mr. Van Loan right over there. You can ask him. Yeah. Thanks for nothing. You're welcome, shorty. Hey. Yes, may I help you? Yeah, I just held up your bank, and that teller over there gave me these two $1,000 bills and a no gun. Well, I hope they aren't counterfeit, are they? Nah, 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 I just can't use them. You see, I gotta divide them up between five guys. Well, certainly, I'd be so embarrassed if my bank gave you counterfeit money. Yeah. How would you like the bills? No and unmarked. Well, Please. certainly, naturally. Would there be any other way? <laughs> Would 20 100s be fine? Yeah, sounds good to me. There you go. And I hope you and your friends will be opening up an account with our bank soon. Hmm? Yeah, maybe in the heck. Don't mention it. They don't call us the friendly bank for nothing. <laughs> okay, really, I got 20 $100 bills. Now, can we get out of here? This place is making me itchy. That's too nice. No, we got to finish dividing up the money first. Now, I got 26 $100 bills here. Yeah, let's divide it up. Yeah. I got one, one two, two, three, three four, four, five for, for me. You. One, two, three, four, five for you. One, two, three, four, five for Louie. 
for the two tens. Each man will get four one. Oh, okay. Here you go, Ms. Glutton. And thank you for banking it friendly. Hey, thank you. Okay. Hey, really, did you see that? Your picture's up on the wall. <laughs> right next to Mr. Friendly, the president of the bank. Hey, hey I guess that missed you some kind of big shot, huh? Hey, not bad, eh? <laughs> We each got $10,524. Oh, that ain't bad either. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm gonna go check on the boys, okay? Okay. Willie, Willie, come here. There's a policeman. He's talking to our boys in the car. Oh, no, he's coming this way. Willie, what are we gonna do? Don't worry. I'll handle everything. <laughs> Here's all your money back. Uh, I hate to see you not being able to do any business. Alive, alive. <sighs> Good afternoon, officer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't rob no bank. Oh, that isn't that nice, but you did park your car in a parking zone. <laughs> This is a decimal fraction, and it tells us how much of the show is already over. If you subtract this number from one, you'll know how much of the show is going to come. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Down, 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 down
And now it's just about time for a game show for the brain. But who's multiplying? Starring our host, the one and only, the inimitable, the bigger than life person, and what a guy, Larry Cedar. Welcome to the show, everyone. It's great to have you here. Everyone out there in multiplication land, welcome to But Who's Multiplying. We have a very exciting game for you today. I can just feel it. Let's bring up our first two contestants. Give them a big hand. Come on up, guys. Yeah. Yes. All right. Playing blue today is... Michael. Michael, you ready to multiply? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Two times four. Uh, eight. Oh, he's in there. All right. Michael's going to be playing blue. And playing red is... Arturo. Arturo, how are you feeling today? Fine. You feeling like you can do it? Yeah. Three times five? 15. He's in there. All right. Michael Arturo, let's turn around and talk about the rules of the game. This is the big board. Now, the object of the game is to cover three squares in a row with your color, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Now, the numbers on the big board represent the product you get when you multiply two numbers from the factor board together. For example, there's a ring on the four and there's a ring on the five. What number can you cover on the big board? 20. 20, and that's what it's going to look like right there. Now, the player who goes first moves both rings and announces the product. After that, the next player can only move the ring that is his color and call out the score. Now, he can move it anywhere on the factor board. You have 15 seconds to make your move and call out the answer. If you don't do it in 15 seconds, you'll hear this, which means you ran out of time. Also, if you call out the wrong answer or product, or if you call out a product that's already been covered on the board, you will hear this, which means you made a mistake. Now, if you run out of time or make a mistake, you lose your turn, your opponent gets to move both rings. The first player to win two rounds wins the game. So, are you ready to play? Yep. Red goes first. There, you got two rings. I'll get out of your way here. Are you guys ready to cheer them on? Yeah! yeah. yeah. All right, ready, red, go. 42 red. 30. 30 blue. Forty red. Uh, Thirty-two. What's that? Thirty-two 30 blue. blue. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight red. Thirty-five. Thirty-five blue. Whoa! We have a winner. Congratulations, we have a winner in round one. It's Michael. That means that Arturo, you get both rings and you get to start the second round. Now, if you don't win this, you're going to lose it, but you could tie it up. So let's get ready. The board is clear and red. Go. Come on, Bob. 20. 20 red. Uh, uh, 12. 12 blue. 18. 18 red. Uh, 24. 24 blue. 16 red. Woo! Wait a minute. Oh. Yeah. All right. It's all tied up. You guys are doing sensational. We have a tie game. The next game is the tiebreaker. Blue goes first. You get to move both rings. This is it. Blue, go. 16. 16 blue. 20. 20 red. 30. 30 blue. Twelve red. Eight. Eight blue. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight red. Oh! We have a winner. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, blue team. It was real close, but I got to tell you, Arturo, you did a sensational job. Congratulations. You won the game because you won two rounds first. For that, you get a Square One TV calculator. Congratulations. And to the red team, congratulations. And to you, Michael, you played sensationally. So we're going to give you a Square One TV t-shirt. Thanks for playing. This was a great game. You guys were sensational. Thanks for playing with us. And we'll see you next time on But Who's Multiplying? See you later. <laughs> Hi, I'm 
Geraldine Jip, and you probably don't know me, but I am the president and brains behind all the Jips here at Jip Industries. And now, because of a technological breakthrough here at Jip Industries, we can offer you the just wait until you feast your eyes on this little Jip. The Jip Miracle Zero. Isn't it a beauty? This Miracle Zero will enable you to multiply any number by 10 simply by shifting all the digits in that number one space to the left and tacking on the Miracle Zero. Isn't that truly a miracle? So 6,349 becomes 63,490. If you act now, we will send you not one, not two, but three, a triple pack of triple miracle zeros. Aren't they beauties? These will enable you to multiply any number quickly and easily by 1,000, simply by shifting all the digits in that number, one space, two spaces, and three spaces to the left and tacking on the three miracle zeros. So 6,349 becomes, are you ready? 6,349,000. Isn't that truly miraculous? Be the first one on your block to own a miracle zero or the triple pack of zeros. And if you happen to lose one, all is not lost. You can still multiply by 100, so you've got 634,900. You supply the numbers, we supply the zeros. And remember Geraldine's motto, you can count on it if it is a chip. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. 7.43 a.m. and early in Los Angeles, but I couldn't sleep. We were working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly, and frankly, George was in a lot of sores. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. Evidence had mounted up against George to the point that it looked as if he had committed a bank robbery in Los Angeles while he claimed to be on vacation in the Great North Woods. We decided to look at scenes from yesterday's show to refresh our memories. When you go back over the facts, sometimes you can find something you missed that can help you solve a problem. We desperately hoped so. By checking the mileage on his car, we hoped we could prove George could not have been in Los Angeles at the time of the bank robbery. Is that a copy of the bill, Krusty? Uh, here's the mileage when you left here last Saturday evening. 68,849 miles. I told him to get rid of her when she hit 20,000. So if you drove about 150 miles up and about 150 miles back... 150 plus 150 is 300 miles, plus a little driving around for the past two days, just from home to the office. So let's say you drove another 20 miles. That's a total of about 320 miles. If we add those miles to the miles on the odometer, what was it again, Krusty? Ah, 68,849 miles. 68,849 miles plus 320 miles is... About 69,170 miles. So that's the mileage you should have on your odometer? No more. Sixty-nine thousand four hundred eighty. That's more than 300 miles too much. I could have driven up and back twice. Morning, Kate. You're here awfully early this morning. Couldn't sleep. I've been worrying about the case against you. That's good of you. To worry about me, I mean. What are friends for? Listen, George, let's look at the facts. All the evidence says that you robbed the next to the last national bank. I know. So that leaves us with two alternatives. One is that you did it. Uh-huh. And the other is? Somebody wants to make us think you did it. 
And whoever that is has done a heck of a good job. But who would want to do a thing like that? It would have to be somebody who's pretty mad at me, I guess. Has anybody ever threatened you or vowed to get even with you for something? No. Mr. Beasley, my right side neighbor, got kind of mad when I ran over his lawnmower. Was he angry enough to do this to you? No, I don't think so. I guess I could ask him, but he isn't speaking to me. When did it happen? 1974 or 5. Who else? Maybe somebody you sent to prison. That's possible, I guess. Debbie, it's Kate. Could you do me a favor? Can you check your computer database and pull a list of all the people that George has arrested in his career and give me the disposition of the cases? Thanks. You think somebody I sent over might want to get back at me? Could be. I bet a lot of them were pretty mad. Monday. Right away, Chief. Good morning, mathematicians. Are you ready for the preliminary hearing this afternoon? We're still trying to prove George is innocent. If we could just find the pilot from Fishmonger Airlines, we could show that George couldn't have done it. You do believe me, don't you, Chief? Of course I do, but unfortunately, it doesn't matter what I believe. It's what the judge thinks, and he's a tough one. Who is it? Judge Hoffman. The hanging judge? That's the one. He's got a reputation for being fair, but very tough. I'm pulling for you, George. If there's anything I can do, let me know. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Chief. I hope this helps, guys. What'd you find, Debbie? George has sent 127 people to prison. That's a lot of notches on my calculator. What do you know about them? Some have been paroled, and some are still serving their sentences. 94 people are still in jail. That leaves 33 people to account for. And? 31 people have been paroled. 31 from 33, two. You mean two people haven't been accounted for? Do you know who they are? Two brothers. Two brothers? I remember them. The brothers Karamazov. Or was it Karamazov? Those are the two. They escaped from state prison about six months ago. What were they in for? Computer crime. Debbie, can you call the warden at the state prison and see if he can tell us more about the brothers Karamazov? Or Karamazov. Sure thing, Kate. Do you remember the case? Oh, sure. It was just before you joined the force, Kate. They tapped into a bank's computer system and changed their balance. What? I'll show you. One of the brothers, Irving Karamazov. Or Karamazov. Would go to a branch bank and deposit $100. Then, after the deposit, Jake Karamazov... Or Karamazov. ...would get on his home computer and change the balance to $10,000. So, the bank records got changed and the account showed that instead of $100, they had $10,000. Right. Then, after a couple of days, they would withdraw $9,000... Nine hundred dollars. Now, the account showed that it still contained the original one hundred dollars. Pretty ingenious, huh? Very. How long did they get away with it? For a total of about five hundred thousand dollars. The bank examiners knew there was money missing, but they couldn't trace it. How'd you catch them? I set a trap. I programmed the bank's computer to check on all large computer transactions. We caught the brothers on their very next move. And they went to prison? Yep, doing seven to ten on grand larceny. The warden wasn't much help. How so? He said they were model prisoners, and everybody was very surprised when they didn't show up for breakfast one morning. How did they escape? The warden said they were very involved in the prison theater program, you know, putting on plays and readings. Uh-huh. Six months ago, during a production of The Pirates of Penzance, Jake was playing the inspector general, and Irving was the captain of police. After the first act, dressed in their uniforms, they walked right out. The guards didn't realize they were in disguise? Nope. They simply walked out of the prison to freedom. By the time they were missed, it was too late. They've been on the 10 most wanted list ever since. Then I'm afraid it's unlikely we're going to find them by this afternoon. David, if we did, there's no proof they're behind this. That's true. 
Have you ever heard from them again, George? Well, not for a while. At first, I used to get threatening letters and postcards saying they were going to get me. It was the last thing they'd do. But that stopped about six months ago. That's about when they escaped. And they wouldn't send you any more threats because you could trace the postmark and know what area they were in. George, why didn't you ever tell me you were getting threatening letters? I didn't take them very seriously. Why not? The writers were in prison, Kate. They got to be so regular, they were just addressed to occupant. I didn't even read most of them. It's getting to be about that time, George. Who's your attorney, George? My attorney? Me, of course. I once played the famous lawyer Clarence Darrow in the play Inherit the Wind when I was in college. Were you any good? Well, not very. We kind of reworked the play. In the original version, John Thomas Scopes, my client, is set free. In our production, you got the chair. tricks, I, I have to practice uh, a lot because otherwise the cards Ooh. fall out of the hand. You see, it takes a lot of practice oh, sometimes. Yeah. Now, is the man who gave you that note in this courtroom? Yes, sir. He is right there. The one who looks like a real estate salesman. 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the...